summer of 1967, six young lads have traveled two miles from the labyrinth of Mossdale Caverns. They've made it through the drown of glory swims, the rough and knee wrecker passageways, and the 900 foot marathon crawl, a low and narrow tunnel only passable by squirming sideways in the stream. They are now hours from the entrance and on their way to the far end of the cave, where they expect to locate new routes. Then there's the renowned Far Marathon. Nonetheless, spirits are high. They're moving swiftly, at least some of them have been here before. They make each other laugh and taunt each other. All indications point to a successful discovery. Then one might murmur, is it a joke? Eli, what's that rumbling? Not the stream going up. Lying flat out in water is every caver's worst nightmare, and it's not a joke that cavers enjoy. But now everyone knows it. The water is sickeningly surging. The waves whistle like a nightingale. Mossdale Caverns entirely floods. They are the top cavers in the country. It couldn't possibly happen to them, can it? Their bodies are a few inches over the roof. They crawl faster, even though they all know there's nowhere to go. The oldest is only 26, while the others are still in their teens. Sunshine and fresh air have suddenly become an eternity away. Every caver's nightmare for them is becoming a reality as they're all united by terror. The cave will serve as their final resting place. Six tough young men drowned in Yorkshire's Mossdale Caverns on June 24, 1967 and the world's greatest caving catastrophe. The cave, classified as super severe, was infamous for being Britain's most difficult, with its extreme reaches seen only by a handful of individuals. As the accident made international headlines, most people in the United Kingdom were shaking their heads, another bunch of idiots risking their lives for no obvious gain. They were mainly working class. This was a trip for men with little money. Unlike mountaineers, cavers tackle their problems in the dark, only making headlines when something goes wrong. A similar event occurred when six men decided to go caving at the Mossdale Caverns. Who knew those men were walking into a trap unknowingly, where the cave they so desperately wanted to explore would become their very grave? Mossdale Scar is a crumbling limestone cliff that rises over the barren Conestone Moor. Mossdale Beck, a river-like watercourse, disappears into the cave at its front. It's desolate and rarely frequented, and some say it appears menacing even in the sun. Both of these are part of the Mossdale Caverns. The caverns are a geological anomaly that consists of two caves in one. Accessible channels go on for nearly seven miles most of them only inches high, through shallow layers of Yordale limestone where large caves should not exist. However, the majority of the stream that flows into the cave disappears near the entrance into impassable rocks. It returns five miles hence, 18 days later and 900 feet lower at the Black Keld Pool on the River Wharf. In the early 1960s, a new generation of cavers, led by Mike Boone and Pete Livesay, wanted to go and explore Mossdale Caverns. The Leeds University Union Speleological Society wanted to win the club's reputation by mapping the cave, which was unmapped. The club's member, David Adamson, who had great knowledge of Mossdale, identified places that would not flood. The reward was discoveries in the muddy caverns at the end of the cave. The young cavers from clubs across the north were eager to be part of any Mossdale expedition. They were brave and robustly fit, knowing they were good to go and explore an impossible cave, they felt undefeatable. On a Saturday morning, ten young people from three caving clubs walked into Cornerstone Village to blast the blocked mini cow passage of Mossdale. Only two people had been down Mossdale before, Dave Adamson, 28, the oldest and leader, and his friend Jeff Burrow, 24, who had recently married and was a student at Leeds University. John Ogden, Jim Cunningham, and John Shepard, all 21, were members of the Happy Wanderers Club in Bolton. Colin Vickers, 23, Bill Frakes, 19, all great cavers, and Michael Ryan, 17, a promising beginner, 
were the other Bradford Pothole Club members. Colette Lord, 19, was with the Bolton 3 for an unusual day out, and Morag Forbes, 22, was engaged to marry Adamson the following month. The weather was good, but the forecast was dodgy, with thunderstorms seeming likely. Cunningham and Shepard privately concluded it was too dodgy for them, but they decided to go underground anyway. Cunningham and Shepard volunteered to chaperone if Adamson could spare them. Adamson and Burrow's team sprinted off with explosives. Morag watched fiancé David disappear into the gloom. In the early hours of May, the Upper Wharfdale Fell rescue team faced a devastating situation in Mossdale. The cave was the preserve of super cavers, and the leaders, Lynn Huff and Des Birch, had hoped that they never would have to face it. They alerted the Bigger Cave Rescue Organization, and within minutes, phones were ringing in cavers' pubs around the Dales. Cunningham and Shepard, two of the most admired cavers in Britain, joined the trek through the mud and rain. The scene was horrific, with Mossdale becoming a lake and the cave underwater. A convoy of fire engines and tractors began forming a crowd near the caverns. As the midsummer dawn broke, the scene resembled a war zone, with hundreds of men trying to dig a diversion ditch and build a ten-foot dam to get the men out whose corpses were stuck in the caverns. The dam required constant repair, and shifts of cavers crashed out in a village of tents. By late Sunday morning, with 15 fire pumps, the water was finally falling out. A team of rescuers went into the cave, determined to retrieve the lost cavers. Cunningham and Shepard, along with other Happy Wanderer members, John Rushton and Frank Barnes, joined in on the risky attempt. As the water slowly sank, they were joined by Tony Watman, a London-based wanderer who had rushed to the cave, astonished to find that no one else had ever been to its end. At last, they began the hardest journey of their lives in Mossdale. Far Marathon, a 900-foot crawl in the Alps, was a terrifying place for underground rescue teams. The first two bodies of the cavers jammed the passage, and the sixth body was missing. The battle raged all night, with five corpses found, but no sign of John Ogden. Bob Leakey led another team to find Ogden, but the dam collapsed again, forcing Leakey to retreat. Coroner Stephen Brown ordered the cave to be permanently sealed and respected as a grave. The decision was painful for parents and rescuers, as cavers often object to blocking caves. The tragedy of the Mossdale Caverns remains Britain's biggest caving challenge. Morag Forbes' bitter taste of the limelight lasted a lifetime, and John Ogden's parents renamed their house Mossdale. In 1970, friends of the victims moved their remains to a high-level cavern, later named the Sanctuary, which may be out of the reach of floods. Behind its hidden cliff, Mossdale remains Britain's biggest caving challenge. Mossdale feels malevolent, but its greatest threat is fear. Cavers will always pit man against cave, and Mossdale will always win.